What's up everybody, it's Charles out here in the Torah, going through some coding, trying to find some tweaks and cool stuff that we can do. First up is going to be programming the windows to go up and down with the remote. We are going to be recoding the long coding of the convenience module address word 46. As with all coding changes, be sure the very first thing you do is copy the original coding. In fact, it's a good idea to just run a full scan on the car and get all of the information out of it. So we are going to go to address word 46. We are then going to go into long coding and use our long coding helper. You can see here, these are the bytes of the long coding. We are going to go into byte three and click on bit two, remote control active. This is going to turn on the convenience open and close feature with the remote. You can see here there's a bunch of other things that we can change. If you don't know exactly what you're changing or why you're changing it, I recommend not doing a bunch of things at one time. Do one function at a time, code it, and then see what happens. Once we have that bit highlighted, we are going to hit exit, and then that'll pop up our new coding. You can see right here, these are the two differences of our coding. Once we hit do it, it will accept the code. Go ahead and do a key cycle. After our coding has been accepted, we're gonna go to the screen in the center console of the car, hit the car button, go into settings, slide down to find vehicle key, click that button, highlight front windows and rear windows or one or the other, whatever you like. Go back, do a key cycle of the vehicle, and then we're gonna test our windows and they should work by holding the lock or unlock button depending on whether you want the windows to go up or down. I also read about a coding change in the radio that's supposed to make the audio sound amazing like similar to the Dyna audio package. So we're going to test that. I have some music queued up here. Right now it's Moana, but we're gonna change that. Some music queued up that we're going to listen to before coding and after coding and see what sounds better or how it sounds different. Also have a little bit higher quality microphone right here, set in the center console. We're gonna start by listening to what the radio sounds like, completely stock, set to all even on the treble and bass, set to center of the vehicle as far as fade and balance. We'll do our coding and then compare what it sounds like after coding. So we'll go ahead and start our microphone down here, give it a clap, and then press play. Crank it to about halfway. At loudest, that was about three quarters of the way up, and there was considerable distortion in that, uh, turning that up that loud. Let's go ahead and make the coding change and see what it sounds like afterwards. All right, in order to make this coding change, we are going to go into the radio. That's address word 56. We're gonna go to coding, long coding helper. You'll get a pop-up box that says there's not enough information. Just ignore that for now. Then we're gonna go into byte number four, which is actually the fifth box because zero is the first one. We'll uncheck the checkbox of bit zero, hit exit. You can see our coding right here is different. It changed from zero one to zero zero. Go ahead and do the coding, confirm, check our faults quick, and let's listen to hear what it sounds like. So that's about a quarter of the way up. It's about halfway up. It does sound different, maybe a little bit more bass, a little fuller. I have to say though, I'm a little disappointed. So many reports were, it went from sounding terrible to sounding amazing. It does sound a little bit richer, a little bit fuller, but not the amazing, crazy change that I think a lot of people have experienced. Now that may just be me, and it may just be this particular vehicle. Perhaps on other vehicles it performs differently, but uh, I'm glad I did the change. I'm not gonna change it back. I'm gonna leave it how it is. The final thing that I'm gonna change right now is turning off the seatbelt warning light. Now, guys, I wear my seatbelt all the time. There's no need to have a reminder in order to put my seatbelt on, because again, I wear it all the time. As you can see, it's actually buckled behind me to prevent it from dinging while I'm shooting this video. So that's really the main reason that I'm shutting it off. It has nothing to do with wearing or not wearing a seatbelt. You should always wear your seatbelt. It is much safer to have it on than to have it off. Uh, but now I don't have to worry about the bing or the light in the cluster 
coming on. We are going to start by going to address word 17. That's going to read instruments for our instrument cluster, since that's where our warning light is. Next, we'll go into coding, long coding helper. In bit one, we are going to put seatbelt warning inactive. We can also page through and see if there's anything else neat that we want to change. I did turn this lap timer on, but it didn't seem to do anything. Once we're done, we're going to hit exit and then do it and confirm that our coding is accepted. Check our fault codes really quick. Done, go back. Do a key cycle and confirm that your seatbelt warning light does not come on. So with that, let me know what other coding changes you guys want to see. I'm going to keep digging and see if I can find anything else. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.